what's your strategy when trading in the markets? Could you give us an overview of your style of trading? In the stock market, uh, I look uh, to find companies uh, that are making money uh, and uh, I want to find undervalued stocks that are aggressively growing their earnings, that are rising, and I want to be buying into those stocks when the general market is rising. So I, uh, I scan for stocks uh, that fill, fit those fundamental criteria uh, that are rising, that are breaking up through new highs, and uh, I want to be very, very careful uh, about the general market. When the general market, the FTSE itself is rising, uh, then everything rises with it. Uh, when the FTSE is not rising, uh, then everything pretty much falls with it. So the general market is probably 70% of the exercise. Uh, so it is what technicians would call a top-down approach, looking at the market, looking at the sector, looking at the share itself, uh, but I superimpose fundamentals in there as well. Uh, if you're trading uh, the forex market, there's not a great deal of fundamentals that you can actually put in there. Very difficult to do the fundamentals of euro against the dollar. Uh, they don't, in fact, publish annual statements and interim statements like a share. So uh, uh, on a share, I can work out value, I can work out earnings potential, I can work out earnings safety reasonably accurately. Uh, so uh, I, I stick that into the mix and by putting that into the mix, I can have a much higher hit rate in stocks than I can in, uh, have in Forex. What kind of markets are you um, trading in at the moment? Okay, well I'm fully invested in the stock market uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I publish that in my blog every Sunday. I trade the Forex market when there is opportunity. As I say, I was short uh, the Euro dollar yesterday. It was an intraday trade based on a 30 minute chart. I've been short the pound against the dollar on numerous occasions over the last six months. Uh, and uh, I was currently short of it the last time I looked, which was 15 months ago. Uh, but uh, Cable, uh, they say if she had hair, her hair would be red because she's got a temper. The pound against the dollar is called Cable because it was first traded on a, uh, there was two quotes. There was the overnight quote and there was the quote on the Cable. So people get fed up saying um, Cable. Uh, the quote on cable, so it's just simply called cable. If you call the pound against the dollar, the pound against the dollar, forex traders will look upon you as a child of a lesser god. <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that. The cable comes up, I'm sure you must have watched Titanic. Yeah. You remember where Rose was sitting at the end of the movie and she found the diamond in the fur coat? Yes. Okay, that's in Nova Scotia, and that's where the cable comes up. Ah, okay. Okay. fantastic. That's where the cable comes up, it goes from the south of Ireland to um, uh, Nova Scotia, just there where Rose, in fact, uh, found the diamond <laughs> in her pocket, yeah. How much time do you spend trading and analysing throughout the day? In the stock market, I do most of my work at the weekend, uh, looking at fundamentals, looking at trends, uh, and uh, I have a, a system that monitors stop losses on that. I call it the genius, and it sends me emails and messages if a share should get close to a stop loss. So I've got that pretty much mechanised where I look at it uh, for three or four hours over the weekend uh, and probably don't need three or four hours over the weekend but uh, that's that's what I do. Uh, in the forex market and the stock indices market uh, I trade forex mostly on a four hour chart uh, and most of the moves will happen either in the London session about now or in the uh, afternoon session when you gets going. So look at that two or three times a day. So would you class yourself as a day trader or a swing trader? Mostly a swing trader. But if there is a morning that I'm free, which is probably three mornings a week, then I will have a look at the 30 minute chart. That was the case yesterday morning uh, and I looked around and I saw that perfect uh, up thrust uh, as, as defined by uh, Richard Wyckoff uh, in his course. It was the first course I bought. It came. Uh, in a big, big brown envelope. I'll never forget it arriving. It was this thick, it was very expensive uh, way back in 1984, 85, uh, $1,000 or something. And uh, uh, it was a classic uh, Wyckoff up thrust. And uh, I just knew in my bones it was going to fall. So uh, if I've got time, then I look uh, for shorter term trades. And I, I like trading the FTSE in the morning, I like trading the Dow in the afternoon on a 30 minute chart. I had a cracking run on the Dow last, no, two weeks ago. Caught the bottom completely, again with a, a Wyckoff Spring. Uh, and uh, 
it ran up the page, it was up three or four hundred points, and then uh, I don't know what happened, it pulled back severely and I got stopped out of it. And I was travelling uh, at the time and I didn't get back into it. So. so you mentioned that you use Genius to help with your stop losses. How else do you manage your risk? I resolve uh, never to risk any more than uh, to start with about half a percent on any one trade, especially the short-term trades. And in the short-term trades, I'd be happy risking less than that, maybe a third of a percent on any one trade. And that means that the distance, that the, the amount of money between the entry point and my stop loss should be a third of my risk portfolio uh, uh, that I'm exposing to that asset class. Uh, and uh, then if the darn thing goes my way, then I shall add to that position. And I like in, on a four hour chart of the Forex market, I like to be two or three times bigger when I'm right than I am when I'm wrong. And as I said earlier, if there's one way to really cause money to come running at you, it's being bigger when you're right than you are when you're wrong. It's difficult because all of a sudden you can go to bed and you're up 50 ticks. Uh, and uh, you get up the next morning and you're all gung-ho about adding and of course the 50 ticks is gone. Uh, uh, and then you say to yourself, well, if I'd taken the 50 ticks, I would have had 50 ticks. So it's very easy to rationalize doing the wrong thing. But adding to winners, pushing your winners is really good. I've got a wonderful simulation for the stock market on a craps table. Have you ever played craps? I haven't, no. Oh, it's a cracking game. Two dice. Yeah. You throw the dice down the table. There's a pin number. And the pin number, uh, they put a little white thing called the puck on the pin number. And the, the, the game is you've got to throw... Uh, the dice again and the shooter must uh, in fact get the pin number uh, before the seven comes up. Now the seven comes up one in six dice rolls so the seven is most likely to come up. But you can actually short the table as well. You can actually bet that the seven will come up. The shooter is not allowed to short the table but everybody else can. So I've got a full simulation of the stock market on the craps table and if you want to beat the house at craps you got to push. In other words, every now and then the seven disappears. The table trends. <laughs> okay, uh, the se I've seen the seven disappear for a whole three hours and when the seven disappears you got to load up, you got to push. If you can do that you can beat the craps table. Okay, most of the time the seven comes up one in six dice rolls but I've seen it disappear for 200 dice rolls. Wow. Okay, when that happens, you've got to load up. And similarly, when the market starts to trend, you've got to be big. If you're not big, at best, you're going to break even. I speak to a lot of traders, and I speak to traders who've been at the game for a while, and they'll come and they'll say, David, I'm not losing any money, but I'm not making any money. How can I make some money? And without a doubt, the reason that they're not making money is that they're the same size when they're right as when they're wrong. And when I show them how to actually add to winners, that turns them around enormously.